welcome to the very first Fort Worth Moms Blog Facebook Live. We're really excited and we are also asking that you have a little bit of grace for us. This is our very first one. We're learning a lot, but we're really excited um, just to invite you into our kitchen today. And um, we're going to talk about the crazy new kitchen phenomenon, the Instapot, and um, just kind of go like over the tips and tricks that we have found since we've been working with these fun tools. Um, I want to introduce you to our very own Krista. She is a Fort Worth Moms Blog contributor, but she's also an Instapot goddess. So she, oh <laughs> Lord. So she has been like, since probably last September, or maybe last August, like, Every time in our discussion groups we're talking about the Instapot, we got to write about it. Have you heard about it? You've got to ask Santa Claus one for Christmas. So I'm really excited today because I know a lot of y'all snagged the deal from Amazon, but um, she is going to answer a lot of our questions like, what in the heck do we do with this? Is it going to blow up? Those kinds of things. <laughs> but then also, um, just we're going to do some really good um, recipes that will be good for your family and hopefully make your life in the kitchen a little bit easier. I do want to point out one thing. Um, yesterday we posted to our website um, an article entitled Fear Not the Instapot. And if you want to follow along with that um, while we are going through this, that's fantastic. But it's also a resource for you to kind of return to once you're ready to do these recipes. She has every um, food item that you will need for every recipe and also links where you can go to see how to prepare it as well as a shopping list divided into dry foods, canned foods, like she did all the work for us. You can be in and out in the grocery store in like 20 minutes. Yes. Getting Fantastic. everything for today. Yeah. yeah. So um, do feel free to follow along with that and um, reference it later. We are going to do six different recipes during our Facebook Live and at kind of the end of each little session we will have time where we're going to answer some questions. So feel free to throw those into the comments and we may not get to them right when you post it but we are going to try to um, get to the comments after each section. So with all that said, we are going to let our Instapot guru take it over with our very first recipe. Yay! All right. Okay, before we get started. We're going to go over, and you're going to have to zoom the camera down a little bit. We're going to, um, I want to show you, like, some of the specifics of the Instant Pot. Um, okay, so the first thing that I want to show you, if you've never opened your Instant Pot or you haven't even started, because a lot of people um, get really nervous about even opening it. I know mine sat in the box for, <laughs> how long did yours sat in the box, sit well, in the box? I got it on Black Friday, and I haven't used it yet. Okay, so like, I am afraid of it. Okay, so months, right? <laughs> so um, a couple things that I want to show you before you get started. So when you get your Instant Pot, everything is going to come in the pot. Take it all out. Um, the one thing that some people, I know I had a really hard time figuring out where it went. There's this little thing called the condensation collector. Oh. And it's just a little cap. And this is just, if any condensation collects, uh, it's going to collect in here instead of going all over your cabinet. So it's going to come inside the pot. So when you get it, it just slides right on this little spot on the back. Okay, it doesn't have to click in or anything, just slides right in. You do want to empty this out. Um, I think I've only emptied mine out like four times ever. I think you're supposed to do it more than that, but uh, it won't create an issue if not. Okay. Uh, the second thing is the lid. Um, when you get your Instant Pot, this little rubber ring is going to be in, the, it's going to come included. Uh, but before you start, you want to make sure that there's a really good seal. So, can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if it pops out at all, it's not going to get a seal. So, you just want to make sure that that's in there really well. I typically just run my finger along the edges just to make sure that it's in there real well. Um, it won't collect or it won't catch. It won't get to pressure. Like seal the yeah, lid. Yeah, it won't, it won't seal. Right. Um, okay, another thing, when we talk about turning it to vent or to steam, um, or vent or to seal, you have this little nozzle, and a lot of people freak out because it's really loose. It's supposed to be that way, so don't worry about it. The nozzle is loose. Yeah, no, I've had, I had somebody text me like, it seems like it's going to fall out, but it's, it's supposed to be that way. Um, when it's down, that means that it's venting, so all of the steam is going to come out. When it's up, that means it's sealed. You'll know that your pr uh, pot has reached pressure when this little silver thing pops up and is flush with the top. Right now it's down because it, it's not at pressure. That will pop up. So those are just a little um, few things that you want to know. Maybe get 
started. So uh, we are going to turn ours on. And the first um, recipe that we're going to do is uh, beef stroganoff. So I want to tell y'all about a couple functions. Um, the cool thing about the Instant Pot is you can saute stuff, you can brown stuff in the same pot that you cook in. So whereas in a crock pot, you have to do that all in different pans and you dirty up a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. I love that you can turn this on to saute. So we're going to go ahead and turn that on to saute now. You don't have to mess with the numbers on it. We're cooking. So we're cooking. <laughs> we're live. Um, so it's on saute. And the first thing that it asks us to do is just to ground, um, to brown the ground beef. So I'm just going to dump my ground beef in there. It's going to take a couple minutes to get warm. Um, and ideally, you would turn yours on sooner. So will you go ahead and turn that one on to saute? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it'll start getting hot. Um, and then I also need to add a little bit of garlic. And y'all, I'm just gonna tell you now, I'm a really, really bad measurer, so I just dump stuff in, FYI. So um, I'm just dumping some garlic in there, and we will brown it. You leave your lid off during the saute function. Um, your lid can actually go in that little thing on the edge so you don't have it all over. Um, I don't know that I always, sometimes I forget to do that, but I love that it has a little built-in spot for that as well. So we're gonna let that start to brown, um, and we'll start hearing it sizzle here in a little bit. Make sure that we're on, yep. Uh, and we'll stir that here in a couple minutes. Yes, if you'll throw that away. So we're gonna move over to the next one. Um, and our next, uh, next recipe that we're gonna do um, is, what's it called? The one pot penne pasta. And the first thing it tells us to do here is to brown the sausage. So I am going to put a little butter in the pan. It doesn't tell you to put butter in the pan, but I think butter makes everything better. So, and this will just help us brown it. Just like when you're browning anything, um, it helps to get some oil in there. So I'm gonna let that melt, and then we'll dump the sausage in. Emily, you wanna dump the sausage in? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the recipe tells us to put the onions and the mushrooms in at the same time. I'm going to let the sausage get brown first before I add the other stuff. Um, so we're going to let that just go ahead and start cooking. If you will just kind of stir yeah, stuff absolutely. around. Um, and we're going to go over to pot number three to start our rice. Okay. We're moving and breathing. Okay. Um, so... We are just going to make jasmine rice um, on the Instant Pot face no, not Facebook page. If you Google Instant Pot uh, cooking times, there's a long list uh, like that tells you cooking times for all the different types of grains and rices and meats. Um, for jasmine rice, I found jasmine rice to have the best outcome um, as we're cooking. So with the rice, like it not being too sticky, it not being too soft, all of that. Um, so the ratio for jasmine rice and water is just one and one fourth cup of rice to one cup of water. So um, again, super easy. You do want to be pretty precise with the rice and the water. Um, otherwise it can get like kind of soupy or it'll still be crunchy. <clears throat> okay, there's one and one fourth cups of rice. You can soak your rice if you like to soak your rice, uh, but you'll use less water. So it's just a one-to-one -one ratio if you rinse and soak your rice. Um, so we're gonna grab one cup of water. <clears throat> okay. And we don't even have to stir it. Um, sometimes I'll just kind of wiggle the pot around a little bit. And now, are gonna actually see it do what it's supposed to do for the first time. So when you put your lid on, it's gonna make all these little beeping noises. Okay, so it's gonna come on and then you're gonna turn it. You wanna make sure that it gets a really, really good seal. I like to just kind of push it back a couple times to make sure that it's fully locked. I'm gonna turn my vent up to seal and I'm just gonna press rice and then I'm gonna leave it alone. I don't have to press anything else, and then we're just gonna let that be. Um, we'll come back and check in on this in a couple of minutes, and we'll show you how the little pressure valve has, has popped up um, and all that. So we're gonna let that be. We have a question that we yeah. have for you to answer awesome. kind of while we're waiting for the program. Sure. 
Um, someone has um, asked, I mean, what is the Instapot? Is it a crock mm. pot? Is it a pressure cooker? Like, what all does the Instapot do? Can you talk about all the functions Absolutely. it has for a second? Yeah. Um, so my short answer is it does everything. <laughs> That's yes. probably not what y'all want to know. Um, okay, so I'll go over the different functions. First, what is the Instant Pot? So um, most people's grandparents probably used pressure cookers and then they got a really bad rap because they were the pressure ch cookers that you cooked on the stove and everyone was, you know, like, it's gonna explode or it could explode. So the electric pressure cooker has safety features built in so that that won't happen. Um, so I have yet to hear of any disastrous things happening with an Instant Pot, which is awesome. Uh, you don't have to worry about anything exploding. Although I think everybody, I think everybody in this room has had that fear that their Instant Pot's going yeah. to explode, but it doesn't. Um, it can do a crock pot, like it can act as a crock pot. Um, but the reason why most people like it, um, for me personally, it cooks incredibly fast. So you can cook what would typically take like seven or eight hours in a crock pot to cook a roast. You can do that in 60 to 90 minutes in the Instant Pot. So for moms, um, and this was why I always was so insistent with Emily of like, can we please talk about the Instant Pot with the mom's blog is because it can be such a time saver for moms. It can be a money saver. I know that if we don't have something ready to go and I don't know what to cook, or if my meat's frozen because I've forgotten to take it out of the freezer, whatever, we end up getting takeout or we end up going out to eat, which will blow your budget so fast. Uh, not to mention it's not always the healthiest. So the Instant Pot you can cook from frozen or you can cook from just refrigerated meat, which makes it um, really quick too. And we'll talk about that when we do the chicken. I'll kind of talk about some of the variances that you can do if it's frozen. Um, so I think, is there anything else that... Some of the other functions, I'll tell you that. Um, so this is nice, what I like about the Instant Pot. Um, it has a bunch of functions on it uh, that are presets. And they're basically, it's just going to, they've, they've taken all the guesswork out. So if you're going to make a soup, all you have to do is press the soup. If you're going to make meat or stew, you press that. And it goes all the way through. Um, I use the manual function the most and the saute function the most. Uh, aside from that, I do use the rice function a lot and the bean and chili function a lot. Uh, but these are just presets. You don't always have to use them. If you are cooking a soup, you don't have to use the soup preset. You can always just use manual. And when we cook something um, that doesn't use a preset, I'll show you how to use the manual function. Uh, but that is what you're probably going to use the most. A couple other little lingo words. Uh, when you're reading a recipe, you will read something that says... Um, They'll say quick release or natural pressure release. And all that means if you do a quick release or QR, you're going to manually turn the vent nozzle down to vent and then all the steam is going to release manually. It's going to do it quickly. If it's natural pressure release, then it's just going to naturally release that pressure, which typically takes any time from like 10 to 20 minutes. Um, if you do a natural pressure release, there, if it says to natural pressure release, that means that whatever's inside needs some additional time to cook. So it's important that you follow those instructions if it says natural pressure release. Um, once you become a little bit more confident, you can adjust the cook time. So sometimes if something says natural pressure release, I don't have enough time, then I will just increase the cooking time and do a quick release, but that's after I kind of figured out the different ins and outs of that. Does that answer the question? Anything else with that? Okay, how are we doing with the ground okay, beef so and all that? Our ground beef is about um, finished okay. here. Well, but our sausage is slowing a little bit because it's on less sauté. Oh. So I tried to get it to go to normal, but I couldn't get it to. Is it getting hot at all? It no. melted the butter, but that was it. Let's turn it off. Mm -hmm. it's looking also smelling very nice. If, you were, if only you were here. Okay, so I just learned this. Yeah. FYI, we just learned a little tip. Um, when you're doing saute, um, so let's go. If you ever mess up or something's not working, just press cancel. So I'm going to go to saute here. And then this little button adjust is what makes it go from low to medium to high. So I have it on high now. So hopefully that sausage will get going. I'll switch it. Um, perfect. Okay. okay. Um, there has been a question, I will address this now too, since we've been talking about the ring, um, we talked about the little rubber ring that goes on the inside. 
You will notice that um, after you cook a couple times, that your rubber ring might start to take on the smell of whatever you've been cooking. If that bothers you, which it bothers some people, um, I have just learned to like just live with it. Um, but I do have a second ring for when I cook sweet stuff. So you can cook oatmeal, you can cook cheesecake, all that. So I have a, um, I have a second ring that I will use if I'm making something that's sweet. And then I just keep this ring in there for savory dishes. Uh, you can, if the smell really bothers you, you can stick it in the freezer overnight and then run it through the dishwasher. That will kill a lot of the odor. Uh, other people say they stick it in white vinegar and water and let that stick and that will help. Uh, some people will also want to know if you need a second pot. I just got a second pot uh, a couple months ago and I didn't know that I needed a second pot until I had a second pot and then it's awesome. Um, just last night I made um, shredded pork and then I also made rice. So with my second pot I made my shredded pork, just put a lid on it, pulled the pot out, put the new pot in and made the rice. You don't have to do that. I could have made rice on the stove. I'm lazy. It's a lot easier to make it an instant pot, so it's helpful to have a second pot. You don't have to do that, though. Okay, let's get the rest of the ingredients in um, the stroganoff. So I think that we are just going to dump the onion. So this calls for one cup of medium onion, a package of mushrooms, um, one can of cream of mushroom soup, and I bought all gluten-free stuff because I'm gluten-free. Um, so if that just is a question for anybody, you can do gluten-free or regular if you want to. Uh, two cups of beef broth. So that's, this is a little bit shy of two cups. I think it's like one ounce shy, but it will be fine. Um, there you go. And three cups of dry penne pasta. Will you grab me that measuring cup? Yeah. <clears throat> Two cups, and I need to add one more. So this does yes. kind of like weird me out that you're putting dry pasta in here, right? Which is what makes it so right. cool. So there's a little bit extra in here. I'm gonna be really rebellious. I'm gonna dump it in. I'm we just like gonna pasta. add a little bit more water to it, and um, because I put a little bit of extra, and then I'm just gonna give it a good stir. We need to add a little bit of salt and pepper. And um, yeah, a lot of people freak out that you're putting pasta in here. That's one of the things that makes it so nice being a mom with young kids is that you can literally prepare your entire meal right in here, walk away from it, um, and then it will be ready. How much are we supposed to One and a half teaspoons? <laughs> well, I was exactly one and a half teaspoons. I'm really, really she precise. <laughs> I could never make a cookbook because I would say like about a quarter size of salt. You need someone to come behind you and like measure the <laughs> and stuff. And this is not how I roll. Okay, let's give it a couple stirs, and then we're gonna put the lid on. <clears throat> Where my lid go? Okay, so it. now we're gonna switch from saute to something else. We are. Right? Okay. Yep. Um, so I'm gonna get the lid on. I can't do this backwards. I'm not that good. Where's the wait? Where's the function? There it is. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna put my seal up. Now I'm gonna press cancel because we're not on, we don't wanna do saute anymore. And our recipe says to cook for six minutes on high. So I'm gonna press manual and then I'm gonna adjust down to six and then I'm gonna walk away. So this will start to get to pressure. Um, let's bounce over to the rice just real quick. Can y'all recap what recipes you're doing? So yes, you for anybody who's just joining us, this is beef stroganoff. Um, we went ahead and sauteed the beef first, and then you just saw me put the extra ingredients in. And um, we're gonna go look over at the rice real quick. I just wanna show you what the little uh, pressure valve, when it gets, now you might have to come up. I want you to see that little silver ring. <clears throat> so you can tell now that that's flush with the top, okay? That's how you know that it's reached pressure. A lot of people have a question of how they know if it's gonna reach pressure. And you'll see right now that the timer, we had it at 12 minutes, and now it's counting down for rice. 
um, once it release or once it um, once we hear the beeper go off, we're gonna open up the steam vent and we're gonna let the steam quick release. Okay, we're gonna go back over to our chick. Uh, now what's over there? This is the penne pasta, pasta, right? Okay. Um, so we've browned our sausage. Yeah, I turned um, it off because it was getting a little too brown. So we just okay. kind of turned it off. So let's turn it back on because we need to do the we're onions and the yep, we need to saute the onions and the mushrooms too. So we're gonna put the onions and mushrooms in, saute just a couple more minutes. Um I'll go ahead and get the salsa chicken started okay, while perfect. you're stirring that. I'm happy to do that. Okay. Moving on over. Now we've got to see why this one isn't on yet. There we go. Okay, this is my absolute favorite recipe of all time. I think this was my first, uh, my first instant pot recipe. This is what I always encourage people to start with because it's so easy. All you need is a pound of chicken breast, pound, pound and a half. You can use chicken tenders, you can use um, thighs, whatever. Just make sure it's boneless. I'm gonna dump that in. And then um, you're gonna do, and so there's two options to it. Uh, the salsa is gonna be our liquid. And I haven't mentioned this yet. You have to have at least a cup of liquid, of some sort of liquid for it to be able to reach pressure. So all of your recipes are gonna need to have at least a cup of liquid in it. Uh, salsa will work, most soups will work, um, broth, water, whatever. So. Uh, the most basic way to do this is just a pound, pound and a half of chicken, and then about a half a jar of salsa, just poured right on top. That's about right. Um, and then you can always add more salsa later if you want to. I like to add um, a can of corn and a can of beans. I need to drain it real quick. Um, you don't want all the, I don't like the liquid from the corn in there, but you could use that for extra liquid if you wanted to. Uh, and then you're just going to dump the corn on top. This just makes it a little bit heartier and it um, fills up your belly more. It makes the recipe go longer. Let me get the can opener. Sorry. I don't know. There it is. Okay. No, you're fine. Um. These, but and what you'll find, there will be a lot of recipes that you will kind of come with, come up with on your own. It's not going to be a real recipe, uh, and it works almost kind of like a, just like dump recipes where you just dump stuff in there. That's how I always make my soups, and they always come kind of come out really, really well. So, don't feel like you have to always follow a recipe. You can kind of experiment. Pour that on top. Okay, so I mentioned that I was going to talk about um, using frozen stuff. I'm going to, this is thawed chicken, so I'm going to use, um, we're going to do nine minutes for this. We want it to be able to get shreddable. If I was going to cook this and I wanted the chicken breast to remain, like just breast, I'd cook it for like seven or eight. Uh, if I want it to shred, I'm going to do about nine minutes. If it was frozen, I would do like 11 or 12 minutes, okay? Um, so... If you had frozen chicken breast, you would do this the same way. Dump your frozen chicken breast directly in there. Put the salsa, beans, corn on top of it, and then just cook it for a little bit longer. So we're going to do manual, and we're going to bump that up to nine minutes. Make sure that my vent is to sealed, and we'll be ready to go. Okay, Emily, how are those, how's the sausage and stuff looking? We're doing really well. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and um, get the rest of that recipe going. Were there a couple questions that we needed to get to? Okay. Okay, so the rest of this recipe asks or tells us to deglaze the bottom of the pan with chicken stock. Um, calls for two cups. So when you deglaze something, all you're gonna do is put the liquid in and just kind of make sure that there's like any crunch, crunchier, crunchy stuff at the bottom. Um, and stir it up. Okay, so the next instruction, let's see what we got here. Add in the pasta, roasted red peppers, and liquid from the jar. So we've got that. Emily can pull, pour that in. <clears throat> Peppers, which are beautiful. 
And then we're gonna add two cups of fresh spinach, which, do do the, yep. the pasta? Yes. how much pasta? We need a half a pound, which would be eight ounces. Okay. Um, so, well, but the, this is gonna be different. Half a pound, how much, how, it's 12 ounces. Okay, so about two thirds of the box. Is that wigging you out, that it's not exact? I think I can hear it. <laughs> I'm more wigged out that I'm putting raw pasta in, in there. Okay, okay, so we have the pasta, we've done the peppers, we need to do... Spinach. We need, we need two cups. Okay, so I'm going to take the measuring cup. Okay. I'm going to do two cups, exactly. Does it need to be pressed, or can it be loose? If it were me, I would just pour the whole bag in, so you can do whichever you want. Well, I'm still working on it. No, the I am the I'm just teasing. Um, my uh oh, what just went off? Oh, oh, it's all right. Hold on, hold on. I'm doing the spinach. This is two cuts. Do you want more than okay. that? Yeah, let's do a little bit more. Okay. Um, <laughs> Coming on over to the dark side. Yes. That's just giving us extra That's nutrition. Good. That's right. Extra okay. vitamins right there. All right. So give that a couple spurt, a couple stirs. Now, do you want it like really mixed through or mix. just, okay. We'll mix it at the end. We're going to add, at the end, we're going to add the cheese. Okay. So that will give us an opportunity okay. to really thoroughly mix right. it. Is that golden? Yep. Perfect. You want to put the lid on? No. Come on. Okay. All right. Here we go. First time, right? Yep. All right. Let's put it towards you so okay, it's Jesus easier. Jesus in heaven, help me. <laughs> okay. So when you're putting it on, you're going to, you're going to want to start it a little bit. Do you see how there's an arrow yep. here? I want that to be this. You want the arrow to match up with the arrow. We'll show you all that in just a second. Perfect. Oh, Lord, oh, arrow Lord. and arrow. There you go. <laughs> all right, are we now good? Now twist it. To the front. Very good. I did it! Now do your vent. Make sure it's pressed all the way up. Okay, pressed all the way up. There it you is. go. Okay, so I want to show you guys this real quick as you're putting on the lid. So there's an arrow on your lid, and then there's an arrow over here. Can you see it? <laughs> So there's two arrows. So when you put your lid on, you want those two arrows to match up, and then you're gonna twist it, okay? Um, now Emily, you wanna do the, Super. so the instructions tell us to cook uh, for seven to nine minutes or half the time on the box. So let's see what the box tells us for the cooking yeah, time. Let's see, it has a 10 minute for all Okay, so let's do five minutes. Okay. So she's gonna press manual. Wide, okay, manual. So it's still on saute, we so you have to cancel. press cancel, manual, okay. and then go down to five minutes. There you go. And we're done? And we're done. I did it. Okay, let's go over to the rice. We just heard it be perfect. Okay, so now this is, the, this is where people get a little bit nervous. So when you release the steam valve, it's going to, like, it's not going to blow up steam, but there's going to be a lot of steam. No. So you want to make sure that your face isn't right over the valve because it'll burn you, okay? It's not too hot, but... Um, I have a question for you. Yep. Because it does this steam, do you have to be thoughtful about where you put it on your counter? Like, is that going to mess your cabinets up? I, I, put, I keep my Instant Pot on my stove, on the back burner, so that it releases underneath the vent. Okay. Um, I probably wouldn't put it directly. I wouldn't have a wooden cabinet like right here. Like push it under your cabinet or something. Right. Or I would definitely pull it out. Right. Yeah. Okay, um, right. I don't have personal experience on that, but I would, I think the frequent exposure to the moist heat would Right, be. because once you use it, then you'll use it every day. Right, exactly. Yep. Okay, so, can you pass that spoon? Yes. I'm gonna show y'all our awesome rice that's just yep. been cooked. Is it steaming up the camera? So, it's stuck a little bit here on the bottom. This is like a rubber spatula or rubber. Um, but we've got perfect dry. It's not super sticky. It's fluffy. We're good to go. So, I'm just going to leave the lid on this so that it stays warm. All right. And can you just sort of recap again for us how we did the rice so we yes. can hear it one more time? Absolutely. So, the rice was super easy. Um, we did jasmine rice. We did one and one fourth cup of rice, and we did one cup of water. Um, and we just turned it onto the rice function. So now we did a quick release on the steam valve, which just means that we manually turned the steam valve down um, to venting, mm -hmm. and then it released the steam. 
I'm gonna close it. We want this to stay warm. So I'm just gonna close it. And right now, <clears throat> it tells me that it's just on keep warm, which just means that it's gonna keep it at a temperature where it won't grow bacteria, but it won't get cold, okay? So we're gonna keep that um, so that that will be ready to put our salsa chicken on top when it's done. Uh, looks like our salsa chicken is still trying to get to pressure. So we have two more recipes that we're gonna do. Um, Can we have a question? Let's, let's answer that yes. before we move on. Okay, how do you determine the cooking time for the pasta? Is it always half of what the box says? Uh, if there is, if the recipe doesn't call for a certain cook time, it's always half of what the uh, what the box says for al dente pasta. If okay. you want it to be a little bit softer, do half of the time plus one or two minutes. So that's kind of a personal mm -hmm. preference thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I would prefer a little bit firmer pasta than mushy pasta. Some people, right. my kids, would prefer like borderline mush with <laughs> pasta. Right. So um, it's kind of up to you. But it's as just a little bit of trial and error, like you yes. know, the first few times you do something, so you yep. kind of figure out how it is to your taste. Yes, and so it's when your first couple of times following a recipe is helpful because it will help you right. determine how much liquid you need for the pasta. Um, and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, the measuring with the liquid, that can be the trickiest part, trying to figure out how much liquid you need mm -hmm. in, the, um, in the recipe. Um, if you're cooking something like a roast or some kind of meat, you can typically just do one cup of liquid and it will be enough. Um, but with pasta and all that, sometimes you have to have more or less liquid to make sure that it fully absorbs and you don't have a soupy. Right, consistency. You're not having pasta soup. Exactly. You're not making minestrone. Right, which you can do. I love minestrone. And all in one pot. Okay, let's move over Sweet. to easy hard boiled eggs. Super. This is still going. Okay, this is one of my favorite things about the Instant Pot. We love, love, love eggs in our home. Um, and these make the perfect hard boiled eggs. So this is not something that you have to measure um, really specifically you just need to have um you need to make sure you have at least a cup of water in the bottom of your pot so i have a little bit more than that but that's okay did you just say you don't have to measure specifically i find that startling you, what? <laughs> you said you don't have to measure specifically i was like i find it startling Star no, you say oh, that you don't have to measure anything so know, right, right. Right. you know but then i just did tell you you need I, to be specific I, with other stuff sorry i'm giving you <laughs> because I gave you a hard time earlier. Yeah. So this cool little insert will... Um, yes, I've been wondering what this thing so is. So this insert's awesome, and we're going to use the insert in the next two things that we do. Um, all this is doing is keeping whatever you're cooking off of the bottom of the pot. So hard-boiled eggs, you don't want them to get direct heat okay. with the pot, Got so it. this just lifts it up a little bit. Um, you'll notice that there's these two little bumps at the bottom. That's what's going to lift it up. And then these are little handles that just help you get it out. So okay. we're going to put that into our pot. We've already added the water. I put like a cup or a cup and a half of water in there. And then you can put <laughs> um, however many eggs you want. So I say, should we cook like six? Sure. Okay. Um, and these are kind of small eggs. If you have larger eggs, you may have to adjust the cooking time a little bit. But we're just gonna place these directly on the trivet. And you can typically get about um, a whole dozen eggs in okay. there if you fit them. And you can stack them as well. Mm -hmm. It's not a big deal to stack them. Um, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our pot on, close it, put it up to vent. And we're gonna do manual for five minutes. If you have large eggs or like extra large eggs, you'll probably want to do six minutes. And now this is going to be the first time that we're not going to do a quick release. Uh, for smaller eggs, I do what it's a five, five, five method. If they were bigger eggs, I would do a six, six, six method. Okay. Uh, and what that means is we're going to cook on manual for five minutes. And then when it beeps to us, that number is going to start to count back up. So it's going to go five, four, three, two, one, zero, it's gonna beep, and then it's gonna to start to count back up. One, two, three, four, five. And at five, that's when I'm gonna do the vent, I'm gonna release the steam. Okay. So five minutes on manual, five minutes natural pressure release, then you'll do a quick release. And then we're gonna let it sit in ice water for five minutes. Okay. And then you'll have the easiest to peel hard boiled eggs you've ever cooked in your life. 
Is there a question that we want to ask? Yes, so we had um, another question kind of about the um, pasta. I know we did just use gluten-free pasta. Um, so whenever you are using whether the gluten-free or regular pasta, or I mean, there are, there are all kinds of pastas yep. these days, um, does that change the time? Is that something that we still need to kind of be looking at the box? It's still, yeah, it's still okay. gonna be half the, half the cook time. So our recipe said, um, I think it said six to nine minutes or half the time right. on the box. Our box said 10 minutes. So gluten-free pasta typically cooks much faster okay. than okay. regular pasta does. So you're probably going to reduce so your cooking always, like, time. that's a good rule to follow in. Yeah. No matter what kind of pasta you're rolling. Yeah. Okay. Um, if it's gluten-free, a couple minutes less Got than it. regular. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, I have cooked things before, and I underestimated how long it needed to be cooked. Mm -hmm. So if you open up your lid, you realize it's not fully cooked, uh, you can run your lid under cold water okay, and then put it back on. That's going to bring the temperature of the lid down. Mm -hmm. Then you can get your lid back on, press it, put on manual, and cook for a couple more minutes. minutes. Okay, that's yeah. a good time. Yeah, it's very Super. flexible. Um, if you think it needs to cook for two or three more minutes, just add like one minute on manual because it will cook as it's bringing to pressure it. because it is getting heat when it does that. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, so this is going and we're going to move on to broccoli. Okay. Um, and this is another thing that I love about the instant pot. Um, so we have in this instant pot, we have our insert. Okay. So again, that's just, oh, uh oh, I'm about to turn on the stove. <laughs> we are going to put our um, little insert in to lift it up off. Uh, we're going to add some water. Should I be exact this time? No, don't, don't ruin it. Should anything. I live on the edge? Yes. <laughs> this one you. So we just need about a cup of water. All right, so when we are going to steam vegetables, you need to use some sort of um, oven safe cooking thing. The first time I ever did this, I literally prayed over my Instant Pot <laughs> because I was afraid it was going to shatter into a thousand like shards of glass, but it didn't. Uh, you can get, this is just a Pyrex. Um, I went and got a couple sizes, a couple things that worked. Um, from home goods and I got them all for like four or five bucks so you can get some specifically for your instant pot you can um, cook any type of vegetable in here that you want to um, for broccoli I just did a quick Google search and I said easiest instant pot broccoli recipe and that's how I got my cook time so we're gonna put the or we're gonna put the insert in and then we're just gonna dump our broccoli in <clears throat> good yeah that's Perfect. great and then we're just gonna turn it on um, and this is gonna seem incredibly weird to y'all as it did for me the first time I did it we're gonna turn it on manual our vent um, thing is on seal we're gonna turn it on manual and we're gonna bring the time all the way down to zero which seems very odd but all it really needs is it to bring it to pressure and then it will be done cooking Okay, so um, we're gonna press it on zero, put, leave it on zero, it's gonna reach pressure, and as soon as it reaches pressure, it's gonna be done cooking, and then we're gonna do a quick release, and the broccoli will be done. Okay, um, you can also do, I've made lasagna in mine, I've got to back away from this, I'm gonna <laughs> totally, I keep, this is like a gas stove, I'm gonna be um, igniting it, <laughs> that would be bad. You can do lasagna in a little container, put that on your little insert, I've done enchiladas. Um, I've done, um, what else have we done? Chicken wings. Um, you can do, um, put it in there, you cook it, and then you can finish it off in the oven. So with my lasagna and with my enchiladas, I cooked it all without cheese on the top, cooked it in the Instant Pot, and then turned my broiler on, on my oven, put the cheese on top, and then when it was done in the Instant Pot, put it underneath the broiler to crisp it up. So um, you can get really creative with what you do with the inserts in there. Okay, let's look over, I'm trying to figure out where we are with everything. Eggs are still going. And we have a couple minutes left on several of these. Um, we have one minute left here. Okay. 
Um, and that's it. So do we have any questions while we're waiting? We are at a we're at a stopping point right now. Yeah. Um, so how often do you say that you use your wait? Something Something's beeping. So we're gonna. Um, this is a quick release. So we're going to go ahead and just release the steam there. <laughs> my kids love it. I Every just, time I have to my five-year-old is gonna be like excited and yeah. the two-year-old will run to totally the room. <laughs> I use my instant pot um, probably two or three times a week. Um, I would say two to three times a week on average. One thing that I have loved about the Instant Pot, oftentimes the recipes are larger. Mm -hmm. So like if you make a chili, just like when you would make any chili recipe, it's enough to feed a small army. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've started to use this for freezer cooking, like preparing okay. freezer meals. So I'll make a large, like a large recipe of something. And um, when it's cooled down, I'll put half of it in freezer bags or in freezer containers. And then I'll have a meal ready to go. Um, sometimes I will just post on Facebook if there's anybody needing a hot meal tonight. I have a couple extra servings that you can come and get it. And I don't always do that, but I'll tell you that every time that I have done that, there has been someone in great need. And it has always been such a blessing to them. So yeah. being able to send somebody with a pot of chili to feed their family when they're sick or whatever um, is a fun way to do that too. So if you're not into eating frozen meals, uh, that's a great way to be able to just bless other people. Uh, and then I've also done it so that if somebody has a baby or if somebody's sick, I can pull something out of the freezer and then I have something to be able to bring them. Yeah. Um, so that's one way that we've been able to use this to kind of bless our community okay. too. So it looks like this one over here is about to almost be done. Okay. So as soon as this, so as you cannot open the lid until this has done, the steam has done releasing. Um, if you try to, that's when you're going to get like kind of a kickback. Um, and that's when bad things can happen. So make sure that it's completely stopped releasing. You won't be able to, like if I'm trying to twist this right now, it's, it's not going to let me to. It's not going to let me do that. This one just beeped too, so I'm gonna go ahead and release the steam there as well. Okay, this one's still going. When this is done, we're going to, the recipe um, calls for adding some cream cheese at the end. Okay. So we're just going to open that up. It says to cut it into little small pieces. I bet you don't. I bet I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> I just dump it in. All right, since it's been a while since we have talked about mm -hmm. the stroganoff, can you kind of recap what we have going on in mm -hmm. here right now? Absolutely. So the first thing that we did was brown some ground beef. We did that using the saute function. After the ground beef was thoroughly cooked through, we added onion, a cup of onion, um, a package of sliced mushrooms, some cream of mushroom soup, and some beef broth and some pasta and some salt and pepper. We cooked that on manual for six minutes. So that's what we've just wrapped up here. And our vent has stopped steaming, so we can open that up now. I will let you get a little peek in there. So, and the pasta. Is this one of yours? This one's mine. This is all good. So I'm going to taste the pasta to make sure it's good. It's totally al dente, which is exactly what we wanted. I'm going to give that a stir. So is this not like so hot you're going to kill yourself when you eat it? Like it's, you just ate that fine and it's not like super. So that one was at the very top. So okay. if I got something from the bottom, I probably would have just burned my mouth. I mean, you can see all the steam right. releasing after okay. I, um, after I stirred it, but. It was fun to do that. Okay. Yeah, on the top. Um, and I could tell when I touched it that it, it wasn't, wasn't too hot. hot yeah. And um, I'm just going to dump this cream cheese in there because I'm not a very good rule follower. <laughs> and we can break it up with our spoon. And I'm going to have Emily kind of work on that. Absolutely. So we're going to just let that cream cheese melt and thoroughly mix in. Perfect. And I'm going to... <clears throat> we ne might need to move that a little closer. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, um, this one has stopped steaming as well, so we're going to open it up, and if you guys um, are just joining in, 
there's two little slots on the side. You can actually put your lid there so that it's not on the counter if you want to do that. I'm gonna go grab another spoon. Okay, I'm still stirring. It's looking very yummy. So in this pot, we have uh, sausage and penne pasta and chicken broth and spinach and onions and mushrooms and roasted bell peppers. And we are going to add a couple of cheeses in this one to finish it up. And it calls for two cups of Monterey Jack cheese. And let's see how much is, there is exactly two cups in here, so we don't have to measure. Okay. I'm gonna dump my shredded Monterey Jack cheese in there. You could probably use any cheese you wanted with this, um, any cheese that gets melty. And then we're also going to add a half a cup of Parmesan. And I would say this is about a cup of Parmesan, but I will measure. <laughs> I will measure this time. I can find my, well, I can't find a measuring cup, so I'm not gonna measure. This is why I don't measure, because then I don't have to find stuff all over the, oh, I just started Too pouring, late. sorry. <laughs> Too late. All right, I poured about half a container in there. And now I'm just gonna mix thoroughly until that cheese melts. It's gonna get real gooey. And um, you'll notice when you're cooking this recipe that it's kind of soupy. It feels a little bit soupy. Um, the cheese is gonna help thicken up the, the extra liquid. And how'd that all come out? Is it, is it yeah. getting, we may need to turn it on, keep warm so that So as you're trying to melt the cream cheese, you may need to press or put it on saute again okay. just to get some more heat on the bottom. Yeah, it's doing well though. Okay. All right, so our chicken dish is done. This is a little bit soupier than I would like. So I am, when we're done with that, we're gonna do the same thing and we're gonna turn this back on to saute okay. sure. without the lid on. So if you ever have something that has more liquid than you want or you want a sauce to thicken up if you're making a gravy, at the done, when you're done cooking, you're just gonna turn it on saute until and it thickens up. And let the water kinda cook out. So yeah, you're okay. just gonna let it evaporate out. All right, super. Something else, just beet. I think this was our broccoli. No, nope, that says on. Oh, I bet there. it's our chicken. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we are going to come over to our chicken. We're gonna let that release. And our eggs are still cooking right now. And our broccoli is still going. So as soon as this releases, we're gonna take the chicken breast out of the pot uh, and we're gonna shred it. If you want to use a hand mixer, that's a really easy way to shred chicken. Uh, we don't have our setup, so I'm just gonna use a fork to shred it. We'll shred the chicken and then return it to the pot. Um, and then that will be done after we mix it in. Do what? Can you shred it in the pot? You can shred it in the pot, yeah. Um, I have found it to be easier to shred it outside of the pot, but we can do it in the pot as well. Uh, typically, I will add a block of cream cheese to this as well after it's done cooking. I only bought one thing of cream cheese to make for, and we just put that in the stroganoff, so I don't think that we will have cream cheese to add to this one. You can eat it just like this. Uh, the cream cheese just kind of makes it creamier when you put it on top of the rice, but you absolutely don't have to do that either. What just beat? Our eggs. Okay. okay, so if you'll notice, the eggs are now at beat. We're at zero. It's going to start to count up to five. When it gets to five, that's when we're going to open it. And we're gonna um, probably need to get a, um, we need to get a bowl of ice water going to put the eggs in. Emily, I'm gonna let you yes. fill that. And I'm gonna go vent our broccoli. Okay. So I wanna, can you share, or let's take a look at the little steam, um, the little valve. So it's up right now. probably can't get it to where you'll what steam up if you do that to okay. watch it drop. I just want y'all to be able to see the vent and the little valve drop down.
I know that this seems silly, but you're going to find yourself wondering, how do I know if it's reached pressure? And that's really the only way that you can tell if it's gotten to pressure or not. Drop down. Yep, it's going to drop down in just a second. You'll see it just kind of fall. <laughs> the watch pot. <laughs> Watch me so that it will actually <laughs> fall down. <laughs> this is the most exciting part of the Instant Pot Live right now is watching the little thing drop. And as soon as you, oh, it just dropped, we missed it. <laughs> All right, so it fell down, so now you know it's safe to open. Um, and that's how you can tell if it's ready. So you can, um, if you want to zoom in on the broccoli, you'll, this is like the most perfectly cooked steamed broccoli. Um, see if I can get, pull it out so you guys can see it. See how it keeps that nice bright green color. It's nice and soft, but it's not mushy. So I can put the lid back on and put it on keep warm. Um, right now it's still too warm to do that. So we'll just leave the lid on. If I need it, uh, let's go back to the chicken that has released. We can open it up and we'll go ahead and see if we can. Technical difficulties, I think okay. it's starting to freeze. Okay. Um, let's maybe try to leave it stationary. Okay. Too much movement. What do you... This is starting to, yeah. Brown on the bottom. I want us to try here. I don't know if it's the tissue. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we're having some technical problems. I'm turning. Are we live? Are we, we still are live? Yeah. But we did have some breathing. Okay. I went ahead and turned this off, on, off saute. If you have anything, if you have it on saute, and you have anything with dairy or cheese in it, if you're not constantly stirring it, it will stick to the bottom. So you just wanna make sure that um, you avoid that. So this is ready to go. Our penne pasta is ready to go as well. <clears throat> I turned that off, right? Yep. All right, let's go over to the chicken. Okay, so this chicken actually does look like it's going to shred pretty easy. Um, I can just use some forks. Y'all know how to shred chicken. I probably don't need to show you that. Um, well, this may work better taking it out. Yeah, I'm going to take it out. And our eggs are almost ready to go as well. Y'all can see how soft that chicken is though. As I'm pulling it out, it's just kind of falling apart. <clears throat> Emily, do you want to um, shred the chicken while I'm doing? Sure. Either one of these. Um, our eggs are at five now, so we're gonna go ahead and vent it up. It's not nearly as much of a steam release because we let it quick release for a little bit. 10% battery. We're almost done. We'll be good. Are there any, are there any other questions? Okay, and, um, for those of you that are watching on like a desktop or a laptop, um, we are having uh, some technical difficulties. We may be having too much activity on our Facebook page and it's like stalling and shutting down on some people. But on the mobile Facebook, it seems to still be working okay. So let us know in the comments if you're not seeing something. Um, we may need to kind of move the camera over and keep it stationary for a bit to see if we can get a better connection. I think we're about done. Okay, so probably, yeah. Um, so the eggs have just gotten up to five. We're at six now, but I've already done that. We're gonna take the little trivet out, or you can just do it. Um, you can just take the eggs out with your hands, which is what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna put them in a pot of ice water, in a bowl of ice water. Um, and helping them cool down quickly. And these are really hot. I'm just doing it with my bare hands, but they're real hot. So be careful. Okay, 
We're gonna let these sit for five minutes. So when our timer gets to 11, we'll know that that five minutes is up. And then we will peel our eggs and we will be just about done. Um, we have our chicken still going here. We're gonna shred this up. And then we're just gonna add that back to our pot of beans and corn. Again, if you have cream cheese, um, you can add that to it to kind of create a sauce. I have also added sour cream to it before and it was really good. Um, you can do whatever. And this is um, basically kind of making like a chipotle bowl. Uh, if you want to be really chipotle-like, you can add some lime juice and some chopped cilantro to your rice and then you have your little cilantro lime rice, just like Chipotle. Uh, we eat these bowls frequently in our house. The kids love them, my husband loves it. It's healthy and it's really simple and inexpensive as well. So if you were to cook um, chicken breast to get to the point where they were shreddable in the crock pot, it would probably take you, I don't know what, six hours maybe? Um, if you were to boil them, I think it normally takes about 30 to 40 minutes to get to the point to their shreddable. And then you just have boiled flavorless chicken. Um, and this was only nine minutes cooking time in the Instant Pot. So you can tell how much faster it is using this. All right, we got this pretty shredded. We're gonna bring our chicken back to our pot. We're gonna dump that in and mix it together. If you did not have beans and rice, you might choose to add a little bit more salsa to your chicken if you want it to be a little bit um, soupier or more flavorful. But now that we have all this, we're just mixing it together and now this is ready to be poured and served over rice. You can also put this in a, um, in a taco or um, over a salad, in a tortilla, in a lettuce wrap, whatever you want. So okay, we, we've got about five more minutes. Okay, great. I think we're just about, um, we're just waiting on the eggs, okay. um, and then we're done. So if we have any other questions, we can. Okay, so what we would do just to finish the eggs would be after they've cooled, we just peel and eat. So yeah. we're really good. Yeah. Um, if you have any questions, even after you have kind of watched the video on our Facebook page, Feel free to uh, comment that in the comment section under the video, and we will have it uploaded for everyone to view shortly. Um, and we will try our best to even kind of answer some of those questions for you. Um, thank you for joining us today, and thank you for hanging with us as we've gone over six really great ideas, uh, different ways for you to use your Instant Pot, and some really good, fun, yummy recipes for you to serve to your family. Um, I want to throw out a couple more resources for you that may be good if you're really wanting to learn more about the Instapot and just wanting to maybe try a variety of things. Uh, we have an article on our website that none other than Krista wrote. Um, it's called the Instapot Simplified Tips, Tricks, and Recipes to Get You Started. So that, along with this video, is a great resource for you, but also a great resource for you to share with your friends, your mother-in-law, um, just like people who are just kind of getting on the Instapot bandwagon and have a lot of questions. Another great post is by our City Moms Blog Network, and they have polled and gathered the top 40 Instapot recipes that moms love. So that is a really great resource as well for you to have some tried and true recipes um, to experiment with on your Instapot to kind of help you get comfortable with it and know how it works. Um, so definitely check that out. Like I said before, this video will be posted on our Facebook page forever and ever. So you <laughs> are welcome to watch it again, re-watch it. I mean, if I know me, whenever I'm gonna actually try to do one of these recipes at home, I'm probably gonna watch it again just to refresh myself to make sure I have everything correct. Um, we're really excited about um, the Facebook Live events that we have kind of coming up for the year, and we can't wait to be able to hang out with you this way. <laughs> this is really kind of fun. Um, so please know that you can follow the Fort Worth Moms blog on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Pinterest. Um, and just thank you all so much for hanging out with us today. Before we end, I'm going to show you our beautifully peeled egg. um, eggs. So when you make hard-boiled eggs, normally like you get some of the white off and they're all chunky. So this is the most beautifully peeled egg ever. Pretty good. And then um, perfectly cooked in the yeah. middle. 
So super easy hard boiled eggs. If you don't cook anything else, cook eggs because they come out really, really well.